To understand the electron transport chain, you must understand oxidation reduction reactions. An oxidation reaction always involves an atom or molecule losing electrons, while a reduction reaction always involves a molecule or atom gaining electrons. On the left, we can see sodium and chlorine. Sodium has electrons highlighted in red, while chlorine has electrons highlighted in blue. What's going to occur is sodium is going to lose one of its electrons, and that electron is going to go to chlorine. What has happened here is since sodium has lost an electron, we say that sodium has been oxidized. And since chlorine has gained an electron, we would say that chlorine has been reduced. One of the most important molecules to understand is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, also known as NAD+. NAD+, is a coenzyme involved in different steps of glycolysis, beta oxidation, and the Krebs cycle. Specifically, what it does is oxidize intermediates within these processes. It does that by taking one electron and one hydrogen from an intermediate. Since a hydrogen has an electron within it, that is the same thing as saying it takes an electron. So really, NAD plus takes two electrons from an intermediate. Once it has done that, it becomes NADH. The H implies the, implies the addition of a hydrogen. Here you can see NAD plus only has one hydrogen, and once it becomes NADH, it has an additional hydrogen. And you will also notice that the molecule is no longer positive, which means that additionally it gained another electron. Throughout glycolysis, which happens in the cytosol, beta oxidation, which happens in the matrix of the mitochondria, and the Krebs cycle, which happens in the matrix of the mitochondria, lots of NADH is created. And ultimately, almost all of this NADH is going to exist in the matrix of the mitochondria. You must remember that NADH is really a transporter of electrons, and these electrons are going to serve as a fuel for the electron transport chain. Each mitochondria has an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Between the outer and inner membrane is what's known as the intermembrane space. Embedded into the inner membrane are four protein complexes, and those four protein complexes together are called the electron transport chain. Now, there is only one electron transport chain shown in this image, but there would be many of these embedded throughout the inner membrane of this one mitochondrion. Here we can see one electron transport chain within the inner membrane of one mitochondrion. Within the matrix, there are many NADH molecules which were gained from glycolysis, beta oxidation, and the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle. Each of these NADH molecules is going to go to the first complex or complex one of the electron transport chain. And what complex one will do is oxidize NADH back to NAD+. This means within complex one of the electron transport chain, there are now two electrons. If you remember within NADH, there is one electron and then a hydrogen, which has an electron within it. What complex one does is it takes the one electron plus the additional electron from the hydrogen. And it leaves the remainder of the hydrogen, which is now a hydrogen ion or a proton, as it is sometimes called, within the matrix. What will happen next is coenzyme Q, which is an electron transporter, will go to complex one and take the two electrons from complex one, meaning that coenzyme Q will oxidize complex one and coenzyme Q will gain those two electrons. When coenzyme Q oxidizes complex one, this, is, this releases a type of energy that complex one uses to take four hydrogen ions from the matrix and pump them into the intermembrane space. What will happen next is coenzyme Q will go over to complex three of the electron transport chain, and complex three will oxidize coenzyme Q, meaning the two electrons will be removed from coenzyme Q and now be within complex three. 
Next, cytochrome C, which is an electron carrier, will go to complex three. And what it will do to complex three is oxidize it, meaning that complex three will lose its two electrons while cytochrome C gains those two electrons. Cytochrome C oxidizing complex three releases energy that complex three uses to pump four hydrogen ions from the matrix into the inner membrane space. Now, cytochrome C will go to the fourth and final complex of the electron transport chain. And what will happen is the fourth complex of the electron transport chain will oxidize cytochrome C, meaning the two electrons will be lost from cytochrome C and gained by complex four. Next, you will see the role that oxygen plays within our cells. What will happen is that an atom of oxygen will go to the fourth complex of the electron transport chain. Oxygen atoms have a very high affinity for electrons, which means that the oxygen atom will oxidize complex four. This means that complex four will lose these two electrons while the oxygen atom will gain those two electrons. Now this oxygen atom has two extra negatively charged electrons, giving it a negative charge. What it can do now is combine with two hydrogen ions, which have each a positive charge, and this creates one molecule of water, which is the primary byproduct of the electron transport chain. When this oxygen atom oxidizes complex four, that also releases energy that complex four uses to pump two hydrogen ions from the matrix into the intermembrane space. The reason that complex two was not discussed is because the electrons from NADH have nothing to do with complex two. Complex two is actually an enzyme within the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. And what it does is it oxidizes an intermediate within the Krebs cycle, and in doing so, turns FAD, which is very similar to NAD+, into FADH2, which is very similar to NADH. So this FADH2 molecule exists within complex two, and then coenzyme Q comes over and oxidizes FADH2 back into FAD. This means coenzyme Q takes the electrons, two electrons, from FADH2, then brings those electrons to complex three, and then the electrons travel down the electron transport chain in the exact same fashion as the electrons from NADH. The main difference here is that complex two doesn't pump hydrogen ions, which means the electrons from FADH2 being carried by coenzyme Q only result in hydrogen ions being pumped by complex three and complex four versus the electrons from NADH result in electrons being pumped by complex one, three, and four. Taken as a whole, this means the electrons from NADH result in more hydrogen ions being pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space compared to the electrons from FADH2. The big picture here is, no matter whether the electrons come from NADH or FADH, what those electrons are going to do is allow for oxidation reactions in different parts of the electron transport chain. And those oxidation reactions release energy, which allow for the different complexes to pump hydrogen ions from the matrix into the intermembrane space. As the electron transport chain continues to work, the number of hydrogen ions within the intermembrane space will continue to rise. Proportionally, the number of hydrogen ions within the matrix will become less. Additionally, hydrogen ions have a positive charge. What this results in is the intermembrane space having a slight positive charge to it and the matrix having a slight negative charge to it. This results in two reasons why hydrogen ions want to move from the intermembrane space through the inner membrane back into the matrix. One, there is a diffusion gradient for these hydrogen ions. The concentration of hydrogen ions is higher in the intermembrane space than it is within the matrix. Two, the matrix has a slight negative charge to it, meaning it pulls positively charged ions like hydrogen ions towards it. 
So for these two reasons, hydrogen ions want to move from the intermembrane space through the inner membrane back into the matrix, but they can't because the inner membrane is made up largely of nonpolar fatty acids, which reject positively charged ions like hydrogen ions. Luckily, there's another option. There is a large protein called ATP synthase embedded in the inner membrane. And what ATP synthase serves as is a means for hydrogen ions to move from the intermembrane space back into the matrix. As these hydrogen ions move from the intermembrane space through ATP synthase back into the matrix, that causes ATP synthase to rotate. The movement of hydrogen ions through ATP synthase releases somewhat of an energy that allows it to rotate. And through that rotation, ATP synthase phosphorylates ADP back to ATP. This process of creating ATP in the mitochondria using the electron transport chain is known as oxidative phosphorylation. A series of oxidation reactions allows for a hydrogen ion gradient to be established that then allows for the phosphorylation of ADP back to ATP. If there are other videos you'd like to see related to metabolism or other topics within physiology, please let me know.